This is Ashley Gruber, um, my wife, my partner, my friend, my best friend, my photography, everything. Um, she's an amazing photographer. No, oh, that's so warm. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jared, my husband, my colleague, my best friend, uh, confidant, and uh, my teammate. The last few days we've had the amazing opportunity to shoot uh, Serge and Edgar in the the desert here in Spain and we've taken a lot of pictures um, and in between shoots I've had a, a little bit of time to edit some of the images and one of the traditions that Ashley and I have is after every day of shooting I'll do some edits and then before we go to sleep we'll go through the images and we'll look at them and we'll talk about what we liked what we didn't like whenever we're done with the images um, Ashley will pester me. It's it's time. We we're gonna look at these. It's time to go to sleep. And so also also because he'll just keep working. Right. He'll just stay because he gets so excited and oh this was really cool and you have to keep him on track a bit. <laughs> and so it'll be probably one o'clock in the morning and then we take ten minutes to look through what we did that day and it's such a good way to for us to look back at what happened. And a lot of times it's a way for it to come full circle because usually after a stressful day of shooting, we don't feel good about it. It, it just feels like everything is so out of control. You don't know if anything worked. And so many times, I guess like so many other creatives, you feel like you failed. I mean, there's so many times we've left a race and just been like, mm, nothing. This was bad. We did, we got nothing. And then, you know, you spend five or six hours editing and then you feel a little bit better. And then when you actually do the slideshow on the screen, and you see your pictures in like a solid, large format, and you go, wow, we did all right today, you know? Like, this is pretty cool. Like, there's some images in here that I really enjoy. And then we then start talking about what, what we like, what we didn't like, and how we have different opinions about them. And like, Ashley will like this one, and I'll like this one more. And then we'll kind of go back and forth and agree to disagree, and then move forward and, and feel better about the day, and then be excited about the next day. And I think it's a really, healthy process for us. Yeah, but also because Jared edits the photos, then he's been immersed in that world and kind of, I, I almost say lost in that world. And then because I don't edit, I kind of work around and do all the other life things that have to happen, um, which makes it possible. Um, then I get the opportunity to look at it with completely fresh eyes and, and have like, a real reaction to it versus somebody who's been looking at it a few minutes on each photo kind of agonizing over one thing or another so you may have then questions for me more from an editing standpoint of it does this feel too warm or is this like do you like that crop which which one do you like more why um, and it's just kind of fun it's a fun way to figure out what worked each day and then if you're on a shoot and you have similar conditions then you have a little bit, you've honed a little bit more for the next day what you'd like to work on. You kind of have, you don't walk into the next morning with a blank, well, we'll just kind of see. You have some ideas of where you'd like to go and what we didn't get yesterday or what's missing, um, what could be better. And it's, it's just such an educational, positive process. And I think it's something that is really helped us in the last, because I would say we've only started doing this in the last year or so. And we have no formal photography education. And so it's something I think that we're always really focused on and aware that we have so much still to learn. And I think that keeping an open eye and trying to look at as many pictures as possible, both our own, but also other photographers. Our and colleagues just to like at the races. Keep bringing in data points, you know, and seeing like what you like, what you don't like, how it could be better. It's, it's amazing. And so in the case where I spend say six hours editing images and Ashley is out there making sure that we're actually going to be able to function the next day and she comes back in with these fresh eyes, it's so much fun to see how she reacts. Like I base so much off of her reaction to images, you know, and like something I thought was really good and she just spends a quarter of a second on it. It's like, yeah, it's whatever. It's nice. And then she'll say that picture is I love that one and you go oh really I didn't think twice about that you know and it's again just I'm kind of in a way obsessed with collecting data points as ways to to improve and I just I love the experience of of learning through images and how how to make them better I, I think it's 
it's a very rewarding feeling for I, I would say for both of us yeah and it's I don't know it's one of my favorite things about taking pictures is not only taking pictures now but then looking at them later and seeing how we could do better the process yeah I love the process now we're gonna go through some photos like we would in in our own private uh, that sounds weird. <laughs> in our evening sessions, <laughs> when we, I say click it or ticket, um, because in Georgia there's like, there are all these billboards that say, uh, if you don't wear your seatbelt, like click it or ticket. And I don't know, somehow it's like, oh, let's click the photos. And then it just became some dumb thing that we say, click it or ticket. So every night it's like, is it click it or ticket time? Uh, anyway, so we're going to talk about our process of going through the photos and what we like about an image, what was what was the thought process, what, where do we start, how do we end up getting getting there, um, and what we think is useful for somebody who would like to do something similar. One of the things I've really, really worked on in terms of, in a way, allowing myself the freedom to fail is when I make a decision, I want to know that I made a decision for a reason whether it be it just felt right in that moment instinct or I worked through a number of thoughts to get to this as my conclusion and I thought it through I made a rational just choice and if it works out or not it kind of doesn't matter to me sometimes because I just want to know that I made the best decision I could with the data in front of me the thought process yeah, the thought if the thought process is sound then you can't criticize how we the got outcome to that point no. that's good you know and so it really helps me to, in a way, be okay with the days when things didn't work out the way I dreamed or hoped. But knowing that we did all the steps correctly really helps. Being because intentional. Then you know, yeah, you're very intentional. You're not making silly mistakes. You're doing the best you can, being methodical about it. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you don't have to beat yourself up for it because you know, hey, that's did life. the right things. Yeah. It just didn't work out. That's you how know, things are going to go. And the things that bother me are when we, we don't make solid choices and we made a silly mistake and that we missed this one shot because we didn't check that one setting. And it's so frustrating then because you feel like you let yourself down. You, know? you didn't give yourself the opportunity to even try fully. It was just you have to make sure every decision up until the point that you take the photo is is right and then yeah shit happens i mean somebody can walk in front of your frame yeah. any any number of things a car can drive in front of you like happened with one of my most important shots this this uh, tour de france is like well that's how it goes you can't you can't be upset about things that you can't control yeah and i i have a really difficult time at, in certain periods with forgiving myself for things that I can't control. And that's, for me, is something that I've really tried to focus on this year to bring the the nerves down a bit. <laughs> and I feel like the thing about this is that it, this is, because we're new. starting here, this felt very new, normal for yeah. us. Like this picture to me is such, is how I want to start everything. And that we weren't supposed to even, this wasn't, you guys have never used this and it's not interesting to you, but for us, it's a very, essential part of the process for us. It's, it's the stretching an athlete does before they get on the track or whatever. This is our stretching and our warm up and kind of going through going through the motions a little bit, but also just kind of like getting in the habit. It's a it's a good time to check your settings and make sure because if you're going to make mistakes, it's better to make them now. Um, figure things out. Look at the light kind of uh, it's like, yeah, stretching. And to begin buying your lottery tickets in hopes of getting lucky. I mean, in my opinion, and something I really stand by, it's that I want to take a lot of pictures. I want to take thought out pictures, but I want to keep shooting because the more I'm shooting, the more chances I give uh, myself to, to get something cool. And if Ashley and I are shooting everything from a bunch of different angles and a bunch of different moments, there, it seems like so far that there's a good chance that something is going to work out. And it might not be what we thought when we started the day, but it'll be a picture that a month down the line we remember, you know, and or even a year down the line. And that to me is always my hope is that so many pictures it feels like are disposable and that we forget about them almost as soon as we take them, you know, and it's such a a great feeling to me when I finish a day and I realize 
that picture. We're going to remember that one. And I love that. So what do we do here? So with this opening shot, um, with our project here with Nikon, um, there's no reason for us to have even shot this. They have no interest in this shot of Edgar getting ready, you know? But for us, it was a way f to start to get a better relationship with Edgar and to, to get to know him a little more and to start to find out his personality and to, to enjoy him, but also to get to know the camera more and to start to feel all the possibilities that it had, but also to, to look for something interesting because he is such an interesting figure to shoot. And yes. Yeah, and so something that someone even told me, oh, we don't need those photos, was like, okay, I, I accept that that's probably true, um, but I'm still gonna shoot it and I mean, I, I feel like it's a, a very valid one to talk about for, for us because it's, I mean, I like shooting that just as much as I like shooting him drifting in the dirt where you don't see because this is the human behind all of that. And I think there's so, there's so much more context from these images than just robot human on a bike. Our tip is to turn on sooner than you think you should and turn off later, much later than you think you should. There are interesting and sometimes really special images in situations where you don't expect. And I think it's foolish of us to think that we know when every good moment is going to happen. And so because we don't know that, you might as well start shooting because later on you can find out that that was your moment. So stay open. Be curious. That, that one. one. So it was like that one? because that was like a little bit of humor. Uh, and I don't know, it was just, who walks around with their pants around their ankles, you know? that To me, that was just so funny and it's got his banana face logo and I don't know, I just, that was something that brought a little bit of humanity to it or I don't know, lightheartedness. And so much of our days I've realized, especially for me, I feel like I'm, I get into a rhythm and if I get off to a good start or I feel like I got off to a good start, I feel like everything else follows, you know, it's kind of um, mood follows action, you know, and so if I take some pictures that make me feel solid inside and comfortable and like a, we're on the right track, then it's like everything else seems to go in that direction. And it's like, I, I love that. I find it an intoxicating feeling to get off on the right track and then just keep following it and see where that leads you. Like being early or it's like if you showed up late, you feel like you're always chasing. Whereas if, if you plan in time to take these shots that could be throwaway shots in some cases, it kind of allows you that little bit of a buffer. And if something doesn't go to plan, then you're still OK. Um, and then if something's not working, you find out before the moment that you needed to be shooting. It's like there's nothing worse than getting to that moment. And that's the first time you start shooting. That's when mistakes happen. In this case, I would say also to have fun. Um, it can feel really important. It can feel so serious, you know, but I've realized the more that I'm smiling, the more that I'm laughing, the more that I have a good relationship with the people around me, the more that success follows that, you know, and the more that we are enjoying it, the more that we are going back and forth in a really creative, fun, collaborative process, the more that we're laughing the more that it just happens, you know? Take, just... You take something for yourself in that way. It's like you make it your own in more than one sense. What we see here in this image is Edgar doing his thing, uh, shot through some grass in this small little pond with a little dam behind it. This is a really classic example of us starting in a spot that we don't actually love the most. Uh, again, with the idea of us warming up. So if we know we have time and we know we're heading towards kind of the, the finale, the, the climax is the perfect light right before sunset, right? Like just the golden fantastic. This is us just getting to know everyone, getting to know the camera, getting to know the feeling. And so I would say intentionally in this situation, we started in a spot that we didn't think was perfect to give ourselves a chance to get into the groove and then hopefully be firing on all cylinders when it counted a few minutes down the road. And so we started on top of this dam, which I thought was gonna be a really cool shot. And I thought it was gonna be a clean, just blue sky with this little strip of dirt at the bottom and then 
him just crushing a wheelie straight across this frame. But it was not doing it for me. Like I immediately was like, I, I don't like this spot. I went to the other side, I shot it and just wasn't feeling it. And then again, I saw the part that had been bothering me before, which was the grass. And I thought the grass was messing things up. And something we've been thinking about a lot recently, me especially, because I get so hung up on these things, is sometimes the obstacle is the way. And so when I find something that I don't like now, I'm actually starting to look closer at it and to see if I can use it in some way and then make it a part of it, rather than doing everything I can to avoid it. And so in this case, I got really low. I was basically on the ground and I was able to shoot Edgar crossing this dam through the grass, tracking perfectly with the 3D autofocus on the Moto version. Uh, and it was, it was insane. Like I've never been able to do that before, ever. Like, and then it was just became almost a joke. It was like, can I just keep doing this? And he would go back and forth. And it was just tracking through basically a forest of grass. And like, in some of these frames, you can barely even see him in there. And it's just like, follows him across. And he's probably going 70 or 80 kilometers an hour across the frame. And it's just not a problem. And that picture to me ended up being something that I really, really liked. And I'm, Again, like a lot of the times for me, I think for us, I think we're proudest of the images that we make in situations where there wasn't an obvious picture and that it, it isn't necessarily the best picture we'll ever take in our life, but it's also one where you feel like you made something. And I think we, we really focus a lot on making pictures versus taking pictures. And to me, taking a picture is just responding in a moment. And, that's, and it still can lead to a great picture and a fantastic moment but I love the process of making something from nothing. And so to go into a spot where you're not satisfied and you think, I don't want to be here, and then leaving that spot with a picture that you think, oh, this one I really wow, like. That's cool. You know, like that is an intoxicating feeling. Again, grass. Uh, a lot of times in this area where uh, Edgar was able to really do his thing and be awesome was using these small damn embankments and so in that situation the first shot he was flying across the screen doing a wheelie and the second shot that we're looking at here he's now jumping off of the embankments and getting huge air doing a I think it was approximately a 21 meter long jump from nothing like he arrived at the spot he carved himself out a little line and then just made himself at home and so again we had because we're using this dam we either have a shot where you think it's going to be perfectly clear, like just a nice, smooth, zero background type shot, or you have this grass again. And as I took a step back, I realized I really like this grass as a foreground. Like he almost looks like a grasshopper jumping out of the grass and it's a fun shot. And so my first thought of this shot was a lot of grass as a foreground and him just kind of floating in the air above it. But then later on, as I started editing this picture, I realized I really liked it without the lower part and it's just like it starts to become more graphic and I really like how the grass now becomes this jagged almost like fence and then the last I think two down from here that one it's like it's oh, suddenly of a different variety to like this is a completely different picture I had it I didn't have it in mind at all when I took it and because we have so many megapixels to play with on this camera and because I had so many frames and such interesting positions from him because I was shooting at 20 frames per second I suddenly was able to create this picture from something completely different. And so many times this happens and that you end up somewhere you didn't think of when you started. And I think that shooting with a camera with a lot of megapixels, while some people think, oh, you should get it right in the frame the first time, I don't- We don't operate that way. At all, like I don't trust myself to see everything. In that moment, you might have five seconds to take this picture. So it's why do I think that in that five seconds that I'm going to get this rider who's coming across my screen going probably 80 plus kilometers an hour perfectly. And yeah, I mean, I would love to think that in some way I would take this picture straight out of the camera, but there's, it's, that will never happen. Like, I don't know how I would even accomplish that. And so to be able to go back later and create new things is amazing. And then also we realize when we do this, that you can create such different feelings from the same picture. That's, I love that. In a lot of ways, um, the obstacle is the way and take a step back and, and, and then a step forward and think about how, how can I stop fighting this and flip the coin and how can I use this? What, what, is, what is so awful about this that can make this great? In this case, our tip would be 
use the obstacle as the way forward instead of something that holds you back and make something that you see as a negative a positive. Okay, so in this photo, um, Edgar and Serge were kind of playing around the same dam and Serge was picking out his lines and we were kind of trying to figure out where we would go. Um, I had the 51.2 and I didn't have time to change the lens and there wasn't really a way to communicate that he should stop. So the only thing that was really possible was just use what's available, um, which was some nice texture foreground and um, amazingly the 1.2 grabbed and held the entire, I think one, one, maybe none of them were out of focus. Like the entire span of him in the frame was in focus um, with the distance of maybe two meters. So it was pretty, pretty insane. And then all the way until he was basically out of the frame. I mean, the last shot of it is I think the last half of his helmet and it's still just as sharp at the far left corner of this frame as it was in the middle. And all of this, and Ashley took it with like as he was basically passing, like you could just see, like she just dropped to the, her knee and then the camera goes up and then in the span of less than a second, it was like this whole thing happened and it was just a response. Uh, so the tip is don't get hung up on things not being perfect. Use what you have in your hand and around you and just go with it. Yes, and in this case, this moment, this spontaneous moment where a shot just happened and you weren't ready for it, suddenly it became a chance to actually take a picture because even at 1.2, even not ready, this camera with zero preparation in this moment was able to take an incredible series of images which otherwise never would have happened. Um, and I don't even think if I were in another situation with another camera that I would even have tried. I would have just watched. But in this yeah, case, yeah, it was... Wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have thought yeah. that anything would come of it. Just, ah, just so, see what happens. Again, this isn't like an incredible picture or anything, but what it means and the process that happened behind it to me is, is so cool. I, I love that. This was an unexpected, uh, kind of off the cuff, uh, Edgar had been going across in, a, in a, a straight line and then from nowhere pops up out of the frame. Um, and Jared, Jared was in position but had no idea that was gonna happen and was able to grab in focus this photo. Yeah. Um. <laughs> This also goes to another situation where you take, you're taken to a spot that someone wants you to take a picture of. And you say, okay, this looks nice, but this isn't necessarily where I would pick to shoot. And in a way, I feel like a lot of times that's where the fun begins. Uh, and then we try and find a way to make it feel like a shot that we would make rather than the shot that someone kind of intends for you to take. And I, I have a hard time with postcard shots in terms of this is the expected one, take this. And you just don't like to follow any of those rules. <laughs> In general, I mean, that's, he's like anti-authority and anti-rules, like, no, I'm not gonna do that. You're just <laughs> obstinate. Uh, but, but, but it's good, it's a good quality. But this was funny because we both found this little hole. So we walked around this whole section um, the, the day before, day. the first day when we did kind of a recon drive. And we walked around it, we looked for different things. And there was this weird little opening with beer bottles everywhere. And it, I think it was the worst smell of urine I've ever smelled in my life. And like kind of like crept our way in there separately and then looked through this hole and went, we can make a picture there. And then like, but Ashley and I weren't together when we did this. And then we came together and Ashley says, look at this picture I took of my phone. And I went, of course, that's where you found it. And I was like, immediately, for sure, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna take a picture through this little hole that was about as wide as a, a can. Well, and the cool thing is, this is a kind of photo that we've been waiting to take for ages. It's something that you really can't do uh, or couldn't do in the past uh, if you only had one go, or really it was a, like a pretty big risk. I don't know, it, it wasn't a risk anymore. It was something that you could already start to take for granted that you can get this photo, which is something that in the past I've spent 30 minutes, an hour trying to take a photo like this in focus with all the elements lining up because 
maybe the rider wasn't exactly where I had focused or something changed and this, it grabbed, it held and he only did that jump I think one time or two times so it was it was the photo. It was what we were hoping for. So take a step back and try and show the same thing in a different way. Like the shot that everyone has seen a million times because this is an iconic spot. Mm -hmm. Show it to them in a different way. So the tip is don't only use your gear for the safe shot that you're sure you're going to get. Try something else. The story with this photo is that the film crew needed straight on shots of us shooting and um, Edgar was stirring up a little bit of dust just to kind of create the same atmosphere. Um, and the film crew said, well, you don't need to shoot, like, don't worry about it, take out your cards. And we we're like, oh, that's like, just not gonna happen. Sorry, like, not gonna happen. Um, it's kind of like the meet the parent scene. He's like, you can take this out of my dead lifeless hands. Like, you will not take the card out of my camera. Um, and so just sitting there playing, um, then this happened. Um, and it ended up being, I don't know, a really nice, atmospheric, almost filmic kind of look. Um, I think because of all the dust and everything. Beautiful everything. light. Yeah. It was so pretty yesterday evening. and. Yeah, it was just another moment where you just realized that you can turn off, but you might regret it later. <laughs> and I don't ever want to feel regret. And so I think we just want to always take pictures. So the film crew was kind of moving in and out of our frames and we didn't really choose the optimal gear for what we would have uh, been shooting with had it just been us shooting. but. Why not? I mean, why not take a chance on something that's a little bit different if you have the opportunity? Um, and so this was kind of just a, um, a millisecond moment and the shot just happened to work. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those nice moments when everything worked out and you, you certainly couldn't plan it. Just had to kind of be there and have the right instinct. So the tip is challenge your camera because the Z9 can keep up and go beyond that. This was... Again, keep your eyes open. Yeah, I mean, I guess so many, so many of the things that we're saying feels repetitive, but there are so many examples of why it's important. We weren't really supposed to be shooting on this day. The film crew was shooting and we were supposed to be good little children and sit with our hands still, but we were really not good at that. Um, and I just kind of happened to wander over um, to this edge and, and I saw a shot that was a little bit different than what we had been taking and I realized maybe it was a, not a hole, no one, no one would know if we didn't show this photo that it was there or that it looked like that, but it felt to me like an opportunity to show the whole landscape in a way that we hadn't done before. Um, and so I like sprinted over and was like, guys, guys, guys. Um, and I actually kind of kept it quiet because I really wanted to be a very good, obedient student. Um, and unfortunately, we were able to get a few passes on this, um, on this big landscape. And so I guess to summarize, stay open, keep going, fight for what you want. Um, if, you, if you feel passionate about something, yeah, I don't know. And two. Try. <laughs> Definitely that, but also in this case, we had been shooting a lot of our shots either from ground level or human height. And looking at this scene that we'd already been shooting in from a completely different angle, from way above high and way removed, we were able to get something out of this that I think really showed everything. Like this expanse, this beautiful desert, and this amazing dust that Edgar was able to create. <laughs> Okay, so it's a two-part tip. If there is a situation that you really believe and you see something, get creative in your fight to get that photo. Maybe it's not exactly what you saw in the beginning. Initially, I thought he could ride that ridge. Um, then, then that became not so feasible. Um, but this was, to me, an important shot to take and I, I really felt passionate enough to get in trouble to take it. <sighs> and tip number two, is to look at the world from a different perspective. If you've been shooting at ground level, you've been shooting it standing up, what does it look like from 50 meters up higher? Can you get to that spot? Can you make a cool shot? 
look at it from every angle and imagine those angles if you can't necessarily get to them, it's worth it. We feel really strongly about creating community with other creatives. And in this case, um, there's a whole film crew, there's a whole group of people who see things for a living. Um, and we would be remiss not to think about what you guys are seeing as well. Stefan was a little, he was low and farther back. I was taking a very literal shot, like right there, just him against the sky. And then he happened to walk by and he showed me what he had been doing. And I said, that's awesome. I love that. And so I went over there and I, I shot next to him. And I think in the past I would have been, I would never have done that. I would have thought, ooh, I can't do that. That's, they did that. I didn't come up with that idea. Embarrassed that you didn't yeah. see it and, and not okay to try and find, like riff on your own version of, of somebody else's creation. And I think that is, that is what we should all be doing. I mean, that's, that's how you get better. That's how you learn and I think um, using your peers as a tool and, and trying to create something, you know, not necessarily better, but just your own version of, I think is something that I know for the both, for the two of us, like we kind of shied away from that for years um, because we, we were embarrassed to go stand next to somebody on a mountainside if we thought that, oh, well, they saw that shot, that's theirs, we can't. And what we realized was, um, even standing next to somebody with the same lens, you see it differently. And so there's no, there's no reason not to try. There's no reason not to try and add your voice or just play with it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's all about having fun. And um, I think more than that, um, it kind of honors the community as a whole. And, you know, Anybody who wants to make photos should make photos, and if it's a good one, say it's a good one. It doesn't matter if it's an, your, your friend's eight-year-old son or what. It's, it's a good photo. It's a good photo, period. Like, it doesn't have to be anything else. This is probably my favorite moment of shooting throughout this shoot. I, I had such a good time. I was flat on my back shooting Edgar as he came over me, so I would shoot looking back and then follow him across the sky. And the shot that I really liked was as he was going towards the sun, which one would guess, and they had these amazing rays coming out of the sky. And I was shooting these at 20 frames per second. And I realized looking back later that instead of every once in a while getting this one spot where the sun peeks through and you get those wonderful little flares coming out of like some opening or crack, that instead of getting one lucky one, I was getting them every single shot. And it was so much fun to see this, that like this whole thing that I used to consider a lottery victory. Or try now, five or six times yeah, and... Is now just automatic, because I have so many frames, it's such a decisive moment, and it's perfectly in focus that you can now pick and choose this one that you like the most, rather than, oh, this one just happened to have it. And again, just like that other shot, it's just... Perfect. And I think it's raining in this photo. <laughs> so it was just kind of this perfect thing. Like Jared has want, has talked about shooting underneath someone for years at this point and accomplished it in this moment. And then the sun rays were amazing. That's why we started shooting in the first place. But then the sun peeked through and then it started raining. It was like, oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> like what, other, like how many more elements can we cram into one photo? I feel confident that anybody in that spot in that moment could take that picture. And with any previous camera, I don't think that would have been the case. And that's at once amazing. And it's the fact that anyone can take this picture is such a cool feeling. But at the same time, I can see people getting nervous about that because we've all been taught, we've all feel that it's the, cam it's the photographer that makes these pictures. But in this case, the camera is allowing so many more people the chance to make these pictures. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit terrifying actually. It's like, <laughs> oh my God, anyone can replace us because it's so good and it's so, um, yeah, I mean, you didn't have to do anything actually. You didn't have to think about anything. You put it on an autofocus for motorcycle or car uh, and the camera did all the work. Like, just have to make sure the settings are right and bam.